Well, it's very important in our day-to-day -day lives. Our senses are adapted for telling us how the world around us is. And if we don't know how the world around us actually is, then we're not going to behave very well in it. So, Tell me, um, give me an example yeah. of how our senses are adapted. Well, um, I'm pretty good at telling whether there's a bus bearing down on me. And I'm pretty good at not crossing the road if I see that there is a bus mm -hmm. bearing down on me. I'd be much worse at living my life if I couldn't tell when there was a bus bearing down on me. So I need the truth about that kind of thing. And that's true of all kinds of ways I behave in my environment. Uh, I need to know whether the food I'm look, looking at is poisonous. I need to be able to rely on various deliveries of sense, sound, and of course, trust in uh, things that people tell me. But it was ever thus, presumably. Always. Is, it, but is there a qualitative difference now in the 20th century as technology changed things? Well, I think there was a big difference when we started to rely on communication. Yeah. And then, of course, communication has exploded. So we get communications from you know, very different parts of the world. It's not just from our neighbours or from our parents. We get communications from uh, media outlets, from fake media outlets mm -hmm. and so on. So, of course, sifting what we're told for whether it's trustworthy becomes much harder because we can't, as it were, go behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. I can't go and see what the truth is about what Bush is saying if one of these people shows me him saying yeah. some bizarre things. Well, and, that, and that's where really you, you come in, Claire Wardle, because um, in a way you make it your mission, as it were, not to be a single sifter, but to find some way in which we can gauge the truth. And do you think that face, the, the technology that's just been explained in that film is going to be, uh, make a huge difference? Because people look at people's faces, they think they can trust their eyes, they think they can trust what they see. And, and of course it's false. Absolutely, and in the same way as photo editing software and video editing software is now almost on everybody's laptop, that meant that an eight-year-old boy anywhere in the world can create these kind of memes and these kind of visuals. And because of social technology, they, they move at huge speed across the world, and our brains are adapted to mm -hmm. trust visuals much more. So as technology becomes easier and cheaper, that's why we've seen this explosion of fabricated and false information. But then I suppose the more false information there is, there's more people checking to find out if it's false. I mean, is, is this about education? How, how do you get at the truth? Well, certainly we're having lots of people talk now about news literacy projects mm -hmm. and educating people to mm -hmm. stop and check. But we've all done it. If we're looking at our, our phones and we're scrolling quickly, our brains, although we might know to be critical, sometimes things that are too good to be true, it's very easy just to click share, even though we know and we've been taught to be critical. Uh, we don't even stop and check when we should do, even when we know we should. But of course, politicians uh, particularly, you know, through the centuries, have all tried to manipulate the truth one way or another at different times. In a sense, is it not easier because you can actually sift through, you can make decisions yourself, is it not easier now to get access to the information that's actually true? It is easier to get that access, but actually, again, as human beings, we want information that makes us feel better. Mm -hmm. And now in very polarised, uh, we're a polarised world, now you sit in groups with people who think the same as you, uh, and you're, you want information that makes you feel better. So yes, it's easier to fact check, it's easier to, to double check mm -hmm. and to Google something, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we are doing that. And, and what will it do to us? Um, I mean, I, I find it very destabilizing sometimes if I don't know what's true and what's false. What will it mm. do to us mm. as a society mm. if we can't winnow out the lies? It's difficult to predict, I think. Um, if these technologies do proliferate in the way that has been described mm. and they become very popular and everybody's using them and so on, I should have thought one possible reaction, my own reaction, for example, would be in a sense to retreat. Mm -hmm. um, and that, of course, is very bad for democracy because if I... If I say, I'm just not going to believe anything, I don't believe anything about President Trump, I don't believe anything about Theresa May, um, that means I'm retreating from a historic duty as a citizen, which is to inform myself about uh, it, policy and about uh, you know, what so, those people are offering. So, in fact, the doing. advent of global communication actually would, could actually signal a retreat. Well, it could indeed, I think. I mean, it's a very rational response to a world in which nothing is trustworthy. If so, you can't trust anything, then don't believe anything, don't act. You've so, got no basis for action. So how do you, that basis for action, does mm. that come from early education? How, how do you get mm. a basis for action? 
Well, I guess partly it's adaptation. I mean, our senses tell us mm -hmm. how the world is and we're very good at using them. Um, but uh, relying on other people, that's something you learn. You learn when they're mm -hmm. trustworthy, when they're not. And unless you can get some experience in both mm -hmm. sides of it, you're not going to be a fully sort of performing, a fully active adult. Claire, does that fill you with dread? I have to say, it's, it's a pretty troubling time over here in the US. And we're certainly seeing people retreat and, mm -hmm. and say, you know, they're not looking at the news. Uh, so I do worry that actually people already are starting to say, I'm confused and I'm worried and I'm scared. And, and, and I do worry about what that means. But is this now, do you think, about the loss of control? That there's so much of people's lives that, that it is not within their control. That's another worrying facet of modern life. I mean, I think certainly people feel overwhelmed by technology yeah. and it comes to them even when they're not ready for it. So you look at your phone to check the time yeah. and all of a sudden you see yeah. an update about something you didn't expect. Mm. So I think people feel out of control and overwhelmed. But also the idea is there's this huge proliferation and actually, you know, there used to be, you know, there were the kind of big blocks of media that you could go to for different things. You knew what they did. But now there's this proliferation of all sorts of different websites, a lot of them looking remark I mean, incredibly high resolution, high technology sites, they look very real. How, how are you meant to know if they're real or false? You're not meant to know, that's the whole point. <laughs> yes. Yes, and there are very systematic campaigns now specifically to ensure that people see the same messages uh, over time. We're seeing networks of information and kind of systematic campaigns to try and uh, persuade people. And so it's very sophisticated. So as much as we try and teach people to be critical and to stop and check, yeah. actually a lot of these things are really easy to fool people. And because the, the, the people who are the great beneficiaries of this are, are dictators, are people who actually manipulate the news presumably for their own ends. Yes, absolutely. And we can see even within Europe in the elections that are coming up with France, Germany and the Netherlands, there's huge concerns about systematic campaigns mm -hmm. uh, using social networks to change public opinion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely what's on the cards in the next uh, And months. how do you counter that? Well, thank God for the BBC, I might say. <laughs> and so say all of us. <laughs> Not just because I'm here, but I mean, there are... Well, you look for gold wood. standards. You look for gold standards. I mean, touch wood, we have the Times, we have the BBC. Mm. Not sure about the Channel Times 4, anymore. ITV, we have to see all our yeah, we colleagues. Have, we have uh, a hierarchies of reliability, I think. Of tr um, that now, of course, how long that will remain and whether, the, whether indeed uh, the BBC will, for example, remain independent in the way that Trump mm -hmm. has ensured that virtually no state departments mm -hmm. can be independent in the USA. I mean, that kind of dictatorship or kind of change in democratic politics is very, very worrying because then we really do lose our moorings and we'd have no resource. Thank you both very much indeed.